who are supposed to be here in a few moments. They will join us momentarily, and when they do, we will take an opening statement from Coach, and then we would appreciate it if you would ask your questions of the student athletes first, and then we will send them back to the locker room. The locker room will remain open for 30 minutes from the time they get here, and so you'll have plenty of time to walk around to the locker room, and we'll keep Coach for about five or ten minutes more and send him back, and then we'll move to the next part. Um, we, we hope to have all that information exactly right for the – Wisconsin team, but I don't have the names yet, or maybe we do. I don't know. Do we have names? Uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. No. Okay, we don't have the Wisconsin names. Just as a reminder, so we can do this once the coach walks in, please put your phones on vibrate if you haven't already done so. And when you ask a question, we've got a microphone on either side of the room. Please let us get the microphone to you. Ask your question, but please give your name and your affiliation at least the first time as a courtesy to our student athletes and the coaches. through okay i want to ask we're going to have the presentation of the uh, trophies for the mvps but we'll do that in a couple of minutes when uh jay mccauley we think will be here to present the trophies to our winner so And as you come in, if you didn't get some statistics, let us know and we'll get the statistics to you. That's the answer to my question. Jay, are you going to present the trophies to him? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. The second team, Wisconsin. Both of them are Wisconsin. Both are Wisconsin. Question. I don't know that we've ever had one. Well, just as long as you don't cut the. There's Charlie. There. Check one, two, test one, two. Check one, two, test one, two. Wireless mic check. Test one, two. Check one, two. Wireless mic check. Check test one, two. You guys good? Check, check, one, two.
Okay, Western Michigan is on their way. They should be here momentarily. <clears throat> yeah, why don't you just put one in front of each of them that way they have it. Thank you. Think. Okay, we're going to go ahead and tell you who's here, obviously. Uh, Coach P.J. Fleck from Western Michigan University will be on the dais, along with his two student athletes, Zach Terrell and Corey Davis. Once they get here, we'll immediately take an opening statement so we can keep things moving. Uh, we're going to please ask that you ask questions of, your, of the student athletes first so that they can return to the locker room. Uh, the locker room is open, and you may go down there and ask questions. We want them to be asked a question or two first and then return them. So as a courtesy to them, give your name and your affiliation. First time around, we have a microphone on each side of the room. If you'll put your hand up high enough where we can see you, you'll expedite and make it a little easier for us to do a good job. Okay? Corey, you're down here. Zach, you're in the middle. Coach, we're going to put you next to me. Sorry about that right here. Okay, without further ado, we'll go ahead and let Coach Fleck give an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions for his student athletes. Yeah, first and foremost, just want to give uh, Wisconsin all the credit in the world. What a football team. Uh, I tell you what, they are uh, as good as advertised, and they play their style of football almost perfectly, you know. And uh, I think tonight they played their style of football better than we played our style of football. you got to give them all the credit in the world. They're well coached. Coach Chris does a tremendous job. Coach Rudolph on offense. Coach Wilcox on defense. You can see their culture running through them their entire game. And uh, I think ours was doing the same thing. But you got to give them a lot of credit. They're an incredible football team, Cotton Bowl champs. And uh, uh, Coach Chris should be very proud of his football team. Uh, on our side, obviously disappointed with the outcome, but not disappointed in our kids' effort. The way they played, how they played, and the spirit they played with. You don't get any points for that. You don't get a trophy for that. Then we don't want a trophy for that. Um, you know, we ended up getting beat. And uh, we did a few things, some critical things in some critical times. Uh, I think we had four balls on the ground at some point. And then, uh, you know, we had an interception. And when you do that against the sixth ranked team in the country, that's what happens. And, uh, you know, the thing that really kind of got us to this point, the ball security, it just looked at times like it wasn't us. But again, you know, we're going to take credit for all the things we do. Uh, this team should hold their head high and show the type of response that this culture is. I'm very proud of the two guys on my left. We're really going to miss them. They're amazing elite people and elite players. And, uh, you know, but like I said, got to give Wisconsin a lot of credit. And, and Coach Chris, and their, their outstanding football team that's, uh, that, that deserves to be Cotton Bowl champs. So with that. Thank you, Coach. All right, questions for our student athletes. Put your hand up so that we can get the microphone to you quickly. You got a question on the front row that you need to put your hand up a little higher than that. I don't see so well. Zach, what did you see on the interception? You know, that was just a force on my part. We had kind of talked about um, a certain situation in which um, if the safety did one thing, we were going to try to hit Donnie in the seam, and um, he just made a good play. And, uh, you know, the ball is the program. It's something that Coach Fleck has instilled in us since he first got here. and. Um, I didn't take care of it. Costly error, put the defense in a tough position, and Wisconsin did a tremendous job of uh, capitalizing on it. Question on the second row in the middle. Sir, are you going to ask the question? The microphone's right next to you. Uh, 
Zach and, and Corey, uh, I know it's just after the game, but, c but can you put in perspective just how special your time at Western Michigan was uh, during your four years? I don't know if really I can adequately put words towards it. And um, it's just been special. And I can't thank Coach enough for, you know, kind of what he's done for me. And uh, obviously Corey and our senior class, we've been through a lot. And, you know, from 1-11 and 11 to the worst team in college football to 13-1, and one, you know, playing in the Cotton Bowl, what a tremendous opportunity. And um, I said once I got to Western Michigan, I just wanted to leave it a better place than when I found it. And um, I can hold my head high knowing that I did that. Question in the middle left. Thank you. Uh, Craig Lynch from The Voice newspaper for Corey. Um, I'll try to be brief. Corey, uh, you made a great catch on that last touchdown. What did, you, what did you see and how did you do it? And summarize your four years going, coming from Wheaton South to Western Michigan. Um, well, on that first question, I mean, I saw the ball and uh, <laughs> I was just pretty much, you know, Coach Fleck taught us, you know, um, you know, every ball is an elite ball because it was thrown to you, um, you know. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if the defender is grabbing you or whatever it is, you know, go make a play on the ball if it's in the air and, uh, you know, go attack it. And that's what I did. Um, Zach trusted me, threw the ball up there, and I went, went and go to go get it. Um, you know, my four years here at Western has been, you know, phenomenal. You know, like Zach said, we've been through so much, and I've learned <coughs> so many lessons, not only on the field, but, you know, off the field as well. And, um, you know, I'm going to take them with me for the rest of my life. Um, and I can't thank Coach Fleck enough for taking a chance on a, on a kid, you know, with little to nothing. Um, you know, it's just a blessing, you know, what he's done for me and for this entire program. And, um, you know, it's just been a great four years, a great ride, and I'm proud of each and every one of these guys um, for everything that they've done. Um, so it's been a great year, great four years. Question on the aisle left. Uh, Zach, the Bronco faithful really turned out today. Your reaction to everybody in the stands, I mean, they really, really came out for you. Yeah, I can't thank them enough. I and mean, their support all season has been tremendous. Um, you know, making their way all the way down to Dallas. Uh, what a tremendous sight. You know, it's starting to become what you do in Kalamazoo. That's support the football team and show up. And they did an awesome job of keeping us in the game with their energy. And um, can't thank them enough for how supportive they've been throughout our career, but especially tonight. Got a question on the front. Zach, uh, the first quarter touchdown, we got to see, you know, one of the last few moments of crazy legs. Um, can you just walk us through being, you know, that call and being able to execute it the way you did? Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of that has to go to our offensive line. We've run a, a similar or, or a play where I hand the ball off all season, and I think that we kind of took Wisconsin by surprise. So the offensive line of the running backs has been an effective play, a dive play that we run a lot. And, um, yeah, crazy legs kind of got loose, and um, sometimes that's a good thing. So it worked out, but um, a lot of credit to Wisconsin. They got a tremendous defense, and uh, that they showed that today. This is going to be the final question for our student athletes, and they're going to go back to the locker room. Uh, Zach, um, Wisconsin has a good defense, but you're, can you just talk about your defense today? Um, obviously, early on, Wisconsin had its way in the running game, and the, and the defense really kept you guys in the game. Uh, can you just reflect on that and talk about that? Yeah, that's what our team is built off of. You know, it's both offense and defense and special teams. Uh, I think they did an awesome job of responding. I think both offense and defense did a great job of responding. You know, me after the pick, we came back next series, scored a touchdown. Defense, first half, like you said, they struggled a little bit stopping the run, but second half they did a much better job, of, and they did an elite job of keeping us in the game. I can't say enough about those guys and the effort that they put forth. And um, like I said, I'm very proud of uh, our whole team, and I don't feel like anybody really can hang their head at the effort that we gave today. Okay, gentlemen, congratulations on a great season. We're gonna let you return to the locker room. The locker room will remain open until they've reached the 30 minute point. And now we'll take questions for the coach. If you would please give your name and your affiliation, that would be very kind if you do that. We'll start on this side and move across. Coach Bill Nichols, Dallas Morning Hi, News. You called the guys over right as the game was ending. Can you just summarize what you were saying to them? Yeah, it's a teaching moment. You know, it's teaching them how to how to lose. They haven't lost in fourteen months, right? And uh, told them I was very proud of them, how much I love them, and the effort they gave. And we will continue to learn from this. We will embrace our past to create our future. 
and it just wasn't enough tonight. But I did tell him how much I love him and, uh, you know, how we will respond to this. But also I think the biggest message was, you know, winning and losing should look the same, you know, uh, when, when you kind of – when it's all kind of done, you come out of that locker room and you go to shake hands. Um, that's how – that's just respecting the game. And uh, I don't have to worry about that with our football team. But I did want to make sure before we went across uh, that I had them all together and I just wanted to make sure they knew to hold their heads high how much, how much I was – how proud of them I really was of them. And uh, that's all I said. Question in the middle on the right side. Coach Ben Baby from the Dallas Morning Hi, News. Ben. Hey, um, what, uh, what about Wisconsin's passing game was effective and why do you yeah. think it worked so well in the I second I tell half? you what, that tight end, he's unbelievable. I mean, I, I thought uh, – we thought – we knew he was really good, right? Um, but, you know, we don't have some, you know, 6'3 safeties or anything to really contest with him. Uh, you'd see some of his catches were contested by Darius Phillips, and we put our best cover guy on him at different times, schematically created some mismatches here and there um, that we felt like, hey, we got a shot to be able to do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when you have a 6'6 tight end that has range like that and you got a quarterback as accurate as they have, two of them, that's what happens because there were multiple catches he had that were contested, and we just didn't come down with it. And uh, the last play, I'll be honest with you, I mean, they got us. They got us. I mean, we had to kind of say, okay, well, we can't let them get much. This is our only shot. Um, pretty much thought they were going to run. They threw a pass. And uh, if they would have had an incomplete pass there, everybody said, like, well, why would you throw it? Well, that's, why you, that's, why you, that's why they're elite coaches, you know, and uh, that's why they got elite players. But you got to give them a lot of credit. Their quarterback is incredibly accurate, incredibly accurate, and that's the best tight end we faced in the four years here. He's, he's incredible. Got to give him a lot of credit. On the aisle. Skyler Dixon with the Associated Press. Thanks, PJ, Scott. you looked a little emotional coming off the field. Was that so? And, and if so, yeah, what absolutely. was the call? I'm an emotional guy. You know, I know that's not a secret for any of you. Uh, but I'm an emotional guy. I am. And um, think about your kids. Think about if, if, if you have – a lot of you drop your kids off at college and you never see them again. Some of you know you are very excited, okay, to drop them off. But uh, think about just giving up your kids right now and sending them off and never seeing them again or having them just come back and visit. You know, I have children. I have a 9-year-old, a 7-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 3-year-old. And if you took them away from me right now, I'd be emotional. So uh, these are my kids. Uh, you know, we have four children, Heather and I, but we got 105 of them in there, and that's the way I feel. And this senior class has done so much for this football program, uh, as a lot of seniors do as they leave their programs. But this has been special because they took, I think, one of the worst college football teams in the country, with all due respect, and made it eight points away and, uh, from winning a Cotton Bowl championship, which you don't get any credit for. You lost. But what they did and what they accomplished this entire year, the 76 nevers, you know, to get to where they got to, it's a legacy they'll, they'll, they'll leave here and that we can continue to build on as we continue to move forward. So you're right, I'm emotional because those kids are like my children. Question on the aisle, left. Uh, Troy Wood TV, he actually took my question. Hi, Troy. So okay. I'll ask the other one. Um, there's already talk, and there's been talk all season. There's talk now, season's over, where you go next. Where does that stand? I'm going to Kalamazoo. I don't know where you're going. I don't know where everybody else is going. I mean, I'm on the bus, and unless they don't want me on there, Kathy. I mean, if they, if 13 and one gets you fired around here, you know. But uh, you know, I, I love where I'm at. You know, period. And uh, you know, it's simple as that. We're heading back to Kalamazoo. Question on the left, Coach Corey Olson from MLive.com. Um, Hi, Corey. You spoke of the teaching moment there towards the end of the game. And you've also talked about how the players teach you things as well. The, did the players or the game teach you specifically or your coaching staff anything today, whether it be clock management or, or you know, anything associated with how the game was, yeah. was managed? No. I thought we did everything we could to win the football game. You know, when, when, when you have a team like that can, that control the clock, and you look at the two teams, we were number one and number four in time of possession. Right? And there were 10 seconds apart, I think, at the end of the game. Just 10 seconds in terms of time and possession. You know, we did everything we could to win the football game, uh, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. There's a lot of things we want to be able to create in special teams that just never brought themselves you know, to the forefront. You know, you, you've got to be able to call it, depending on how the game goes. We dug ourselves a 14 to nothing hole, 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 hole. And um, that's what happens. Okay, we got a question. I've lost the microphone now. Where's the microphone? Okay, Dave. Dave Michaels with the North Texas Sports Network. 
Coach, you talk about making history. You talk about taking a team that was at its worst to its best, 13-0, and make it 13-1. and What's this do for you, for your team in the future with a Cotton Bowl appearance and putting this school, this uh, Western Michigan, on the map? Well, I think the first thing it does is it helps recruiting. Uh, recruiting is the lifeline of any football program. And any former coach or any athletic director and anybody who knows anything about football will tell you, if you don't have players, you're not going to win, first and foremost. You know, then they got to be elite people. you got to make sure of that and get the right people into your system. Uh, so that's what it helps. You know, I want people to understand if you come to Western Michigan University, right, you have an opportunity to win a national championship. And that's true. And as for all the talk out there, that is true. Now, it's a little bit harder to win a national championship right, and get to the playoff or get to the Cotton Bowl when you're in the group of five. However, it can be done, and we've proven that. Northern Illinois has proven that. Boise has proven that. Right? Houston has proven that. And if we remember back with Houston being 6-0 and or whatever they were, there was talk of them being in the Final Four. Why? Because they did it two consecutive years. And, uh, again, that, that's where the next step of our football program is. Now, I'm not saying we're going to be in the national title talk next year, but we have to take the next right step, and that's by upgrading our recruiting, upgrading our facilities, continue to take our program from where it is, and take the next right step. For that to happen, there's got to be a lot more people committed than just Coach Fleck. There's got to be a lot more people committed to that. And I think this type of game helps that. You saw the crowd out there. I mean, if some of you don't even think there's a Kalamazoo, Michigan that exists, there's 150,000 people within a six-mile radius of Kalamazoo. It's a fabulous Little town. you got to come out and see it, right? But my point is, is that's what we have to be able to do. Capture what you saw out there at AT AT&T Stadium, capture it in a bottle, and spread it to everybody else, and continue to get Bronco Nation to rise and grow higher. Question on the left. Coach uh, Coach Craig Lynch again from The Voice Newspaper. And you've beaten Big Ten teams before, so when you had to take your – their punch early, you punched back. So the moment wasn't that big for you guys. Do you think the fact that you'd beaten Big Ten teams before helped a little bit? You know, I, I think it helped with our players listening to the outside media. But with, with inside our walls, we take one game at a time. Um, if anything, from the outside noise, it gave validity to what everybody was saying. But Wisconsin, with all due respect, Wisconsin's a different animal. Uh, you know, they were uh, a few seconds away from winning the Big Ten championship, and, um, and here they are in the Cotton Bowl, right? And you're talking about a top six, top seven team in the country. And when you play a team like that, you almost have to be flawless. Both teams, something's going to give. And I think a lot of you said that, something's going to give. Well, something did give. You know, we, we screwed up first. We threw the big interception. And go figure, the guy that was committed to us that flips to Wisconsin picks it. There's a reason why we recruited that guy. I promise you. There was a reason. That was it. Got to give TJ a lot of credit. But he did come up to me after the game. I do want to say that. He did come up to me. And it was uh, kind of ironic. This is the final question for Coach. Coach, John Henry with the uh, Star Telegram in Fort Worth. Hi, John. Uh, you guys also probably haven't been down 14-0 much this season. At and all. How, how, uh, what was the mood of your, of your team at that point, and what was your message to them, your coach's message to them? Yeah, it's to probably going to be really shit. Oh, yeah, it's probably going to be really shocking to you, but it was row the boat. Put your oar in the water and just keep rowing. You know, we're in, we're, in a, we're in a storm right now, and it's pretty bad. But, again, if we stop rowing, it's going to get a lot worse, and we'll never get out of it. You know, some of you row, some of you don't. We're going to go in a circle. But if we continue to row, we'll get out of it. And we came out of it, right? And um, there's highs and lows throughout the entire football game. Whether it's high or whether it's low, our team's trained to just continue to row and continue to do it for each other. We knew that um, – you know, even at the coin toss, right, and we defer, it was like, well, pick your poison, right? Do you, do you, do you want to be able to get the ball in the second half after when you make adjustments? And that's our philosophy. We want to be able to have that in the second half. And uh, they came out and scored. And then uh, we went, you know, we had one first down with Corey, and then we went three and out. Then they scored again. Then we had, a, we had a pretty big hole. But when you dig a 14 to nothing hole against the seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth team, ranked team in the country, it's, good to, it's tough to cl- climb out of, and you saw that. We struggled to get out of that all night long or all day long. But I'm very proud of our kids' resolve and the resiliency. Uh, they showed what Western Michigan football is all about, and they showed the entire country why we were 13-0. and And uh, for all of they who didn't think we belong, uh, I think we do belong. And uh, we'll continue to grow higher, keep changing our best, and keep rowing the boat. Okay, Coach, thank you very you much thank for your you comments, and good luck to you. Have a great season. Congratulations. did say that we're going to bring T.J. Edwards. Wherever they'll be here.
Right. They're putting them up just a second. Okay. I'm sure they will when they can't write their story. I would rather that you didn't get the picture. <laughs> you got your name tagged up here. You should be able to see where you are. No, those are true. Those are not. Yeah. Troy, you're down there. Is that right? Yeah. Right. TJ is in the middle, I think. And then coach. Okay. We're now joined by the Wisconsin uh, coach uh, and his student athletes. We're going to make this as quick as we can. So, coach, we'll open it up to you to questions, and then we're going to have a quick presentation. I mean, a quick, an opening statement, and then a quick presentation. Is that okay? Okay. Well, I'll be quick. Really proud of this group, and uh, again, appreciate all the Cotton Bowl and Goodyear did. For an unbelievable week, but uh, to finish it the way our guys did, I thought it was a microcosm of, of our season. And it took everyone to, to get that win, and uh, really proud of this team. It's a, it's a fun team to be around, and uh, it's a heck of a way to end it. Okay, we'd like to present the uh, outstanding trophy players, if we can, real quick. The recipient of the Sanford Trophy is the outstanding offensive player is Troy Fumagalli from Wisconsin. He's a tight end junior from Aurora, Illinois. And Jay McCauley is going to present this trophy to you. Troy, if you'll stand up and take the trophy. Congratulations to you. And the recipient of the McKnight Trophy is the outstanding defensive player is T.J. Edwards of Wisconsin. Inside linebacker, he's a sophomore from Lake Villa, Illinois. Congratulations to you. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, what we'd like to do, questions for our student athletes first, please, so that they can go back to the locker room. And if you will, please give your name and your affiliation. We've got a microphone if you want to use it. We've got a question on the far right side, and we'll start there. And then we'll go to the left. Phil Woodall, uh, KPUR Radio in Amarillo, Texas. TJ, talk about uh, the pick that really turned the ball game around. Uh, you know, I think their quarterback was doing a great job all game of, you know, reading our eyes and getting the ball out fast. So, you know, we just needed a play to spark it. And, you know, I'm just glad I, can, I was able to do that. Got a question on the left. Troy, Wendell Barnhouse, uh, FanRagSports.com. You had a big game, obviously. Did you think coming in, was there anything in the scouting report that would indicate – you're going to be able to get done what you accomplished, and can you just kind of explain it? Um, not necessarily. I think, uh, you know, Coach Chris, he does a great job just, just putting, uh, you know, the best matchups out there. Um, you know, I think they started playing downhill a little bit, trying to stop the run, and, and it really opened up things over the top. Question on the left, and then we'll come to the middle. Um. Craig Lynch from The Voice again. Uh, Troy, um, you've had an outstanding, uh, quite a journey uh, to come to Wisconsin and now to be the most valuable offensive player in the Cotton Bowl. Could you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's special. Um, you know, we, we've done such a great job just, you know, working in the off season. Uh, you know, so much work goes into it. Um, you know, credit to the whole team. It, it, it's a great feeling, um, you know, to come out on top. Um, you know, it's, it's been a heck of a journey, uh, especially with the senior class to um, you know, give them the opportunities they had and, and to send them out the right way. It's, it's been a great journey. Got a question in the middle right, and then we'll come up to the front. Uh, Troy, Ben Baby with the uh, Dallas Morning News uh, right here. You know, do you think that the way you all were able to run the ball early, um, seeing how effective that was, that you were going to have your shots in the second half to, to make some big plays there? Yeah, I think um, 
Yeah, I think you, I think you said it right. Um, you know, they, they started playing up downhill. Um, you know, bringing an extra guy, you bringing a safety down, and uh, you know you, you can't do both sometimes. So uh, you know, we took advantage of that, and um, that's where we went. Okay, you got a question on the right hand side. Uh, TJ, how, how eager was the defense to to kind of bounce back from the last game and, and make sure you go out there and uh, put on a good performance today? Yeah, you know, just like you said, I think it kind of left a bad taste in our mouth after that, the Big Ten Championship game. And, you know, it's not that, you know, we were, you know, sad or anything like that. We just wanted to get back out there and prove ourselves again. And uh, I think, you know, our prep throughout the whole week was good. And, you know, it was just time to prove ourselves. So I'm glad we could do that. We got a question in the middle again. Uh, TJ, you uh, rowed the boat after that, uh, after that INT. Um, kind of what was running through your mind and kind of what you uh, – what was – talk about that whole sequence of events from the pick to the uh, to the row, and I guess you talked to Coach Fleck afterwards. Uh, you know, it was just – you know, I just made a play on the ball, and, you know, I was able to come up with it. And, you know, it was just a spontaneous thing, you know, just trying to have fun with it. But, you know, nothing – not trying to, you know, create a message or anything like that, so. Any further questions for our student athletes before we return them to the locker room? Okay, gentlemen, congratulations on a great season and a big win. We're going to let you stay, Coach, and let the student athletes go back. No, you don't get to leave yet. Congratulations to you guys, and uh, you can't take the trophies with you. We'll, we'll uh, ship them to you. I think that, that because they'll have your name on there. Congratulations, guys. Okay, questions on the front row, right-hand side, and then we'll move across to the left. Coach, uh, why did you guys end up not uh, playing Bradrick in this game? You know, uh, Bradrick got dinged up a little bit in uh, the preparation, so missed out on a lot of the, the work. And, you know, he was ready to go should we need him. And, and yet really kind of by the end of it, uh, we're going to ride Corey as much as we could. Question on the left hand side front. Wendell Barnhouse, FanRagSports.com. Particularly early in the game, you guys got out on the edge quite a bit, particularly with the jet sweep. First of all, what made that so effective, and was that something that you guys saw that maybe could kind of loosen things up? Yeah, you know, we thought that the way they were uh, going into the game, the way they might fit some of our runs, especially in some of the heavier packages that we're in, that it, uh, it, we might get something out of it. And, if, and kind of what you said in the question, if not, just be able to threaten, you know, the perimeter to open up maybe some inside runs on it. And I thought, you know, the offense staff did a really nice job of, of kind of prepping our kids and uh, designing the, the runs, you know, things that we did all year, but to, to fit the different, many different looks that Western gave us. And I thought the kids were great in the preparation. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't play a perfect game, but they did a lot of things to give us a chance. And, um, you know, certainly the early the, the jet sweeps were big. Question on the outside right. Coach Phil Woodall, Amarillo, Texas, KPR Radio. After early success with Corey Clement, they kind of shut him down after that uh, first couple of drives. What happened? Well, they did a nice job of adjusting. I think he gave us some some other plays, but it's a good defense and uh, you know well coached with some good players, and and they were going to make some plays, and they did. And, and so I thought, you know, we certainly weren't perfect on you know coming back to him what we had to kind of answered it or counter how to counter their moves. But I thought we did enough adjusting that was that was that was good and, and gave our players a chance. But it's uh you know they're good defense and um you know I think they did some things to adjust and and that's kind of the fun of the game. Got a question in the outside left and I mean right and then we'll do the middle. Go ahead. Coach Dave, Dave Michaels with the North Texas Sports Network Western Michigan threw a little razzle-dazzle in there, a little reverse, but it seems that the discipline of your defense was right there. They stuck with, the, with their men and didn't get kind of confused on it. Talk a little bit about the discipline that you have on your defensive side of the ball. I think you're right on that, and I think the defense staff did a heck of a job preparing our players. And, you know, Western's – their offense, you, you know, and preparing for it, watching their whole season, they can hurt you in a number of different ways, and I thought that – you know, we, we certainly didn't play a perfect game, but guys did play discipline. And when we didn't uh, make a play, we knew why. You, you know, we had to clean up, whether it's a guy getting into a gap or, 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 you know, finishing a stunt. But I think all year long our, our, our defense done a nice job of playing. And I think they trust the plan and they trust themselves. And I think what else they do is they trust the guy next to them. So they don't try to overcompensate. And uh, I think it came up with a number of big plays, you know, 
we got the ball out, but we didn't get any, you know, the, the takeaways other than TJ's pick. And, you know, Western had done a nice job, but the guys, I thought guys competed. Question in the middle, Ben. Uh, Coach, kind of Ben maybe again with the morning news, uh, kind of do a similar question with the run game. Um, do you feel like it was important to establish that run early so Bart would have those windows to pass the ball uh, later on? Because it seemed like they were stacking the box after that first quarter. Yeah, I think that was, you know, we thought that we had some runs that we could get on them. And, and then you want to see how they adjust. And when they do, like you say, add another hat into the box, then you've got to be able to do some things in the passing game or like we were talking about earlier, you know, whether it's with a jet sweep. And they started doing a nice job of adjusting to it. Um, you know, but it did give, we thought it gave us some other uh, opportunities. And I thought guys, you know, made some plays. You know, and that was big. Even the, the last drive, you know, that third down was a big completion. And uh, even finishing it on the, on, you know, the run by Ram, it uh, took a lot of guys. But they did a nice job of, of kind of countering what we were doing, and, and there was a bit of a chess match going on. Outside left. Wendell Barnhouse, Van Rake Sports. Uh, Troy, uh, there are not a lot of tight ends in college football that are as effective as he was today. Uh, how do you, what are the ways you want to use your tight end, and is he kind of perfect for what you guys try to do? Yeah, I've been really fortunate. We've had a number of really good tight ends uh, at Wisconsin, and and they're all different, but Fuma's got the ability to, uh, to be a matchup problem for a number of teams or a number of individuals if, you know, they're playing a man. And, you know, he's he's big, he's uh, he's skilled, you know, he runs well enough and, and has a great knack to, to separate. And I think another thing that's important is our, our quarterbacks trust him, you know, so that he's got a big reception radius. And I think he's done a really nice job this year of continuing to develop as a blocker and, and – um, he was big today. It was fun. It was fun to see. In the middle, right side, the left side. Coach, uh, at the beginning of the season, uh, people were talking about your quarterbacks. Uh, here today, they were 13 out of 14. So a lot of improvement from your quarterbacks uh, from the start of the season to the end. They did. I thought they handled. You know, both playing and, and wanted to play them both and did a nice job in the preparation. And, uh, you know, 14 attempts isn't a lot, but, you know, there were some key third downs in there. And I thought Alex came in and made a heck of a throw to Foom in the, in the red zone. And, you know, those two, they work at it and, and you know, they care a ton about this team and, and want to do their part. And you, you really appreciate that as a coach. And uh, it was good to see Bart finish his career here at Wisconsin the way that he did, and, and I'm excited about the growth, you know, that Alex took this year and the steps he can take to, to go forward. He's got a lot of football ahead of him, and, and uh, both were important to us all year long, and, and it was uh, certainly that way today, too. Any further questions for Coach? Last chance. Okay, Coach, congratulations on the win, and congratulations on a great season. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Somebody left a recording device, and there's another one up here. So if you guys are donating recording devices, let us know.